Well, good afternoon, everybody. Darren Saul here, your host of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. Hopefully everybody's had a fantastic weekend. Beautiful sunny day in Sydney. I have a super fun show today. Music and Kartik with the super talented Kart- Karthik Kuna. Sorry, Karthik. It's Karthik okay. Kuna. That's the one. How are you doing? I'm good, Darren. How are you? Thank you so much for having me on your show. Uh, very well, Pleasure. then. Thanks for coming in. Now, Karthik Kuna is a Singaporean Australian singer songwriter currently enchanting the city of Sydney with his charming cadences and suave soundscapes. He's an artist with a remarkable versatility. His velvety smooth pop and R&B vocals, complemented with his groovy guitar and killer keys, make for a sensory delight. With a flair and flow and a way with words, a modern day love story is told. Kuna's catchy songs will have you head bobbing, toe tapping and swaying to the melody. Each musical release has captivated the crowds. He has been awarded the runner up prize for his original song, A Better Day for a national competition, Change the World with Your Song. His single, Home Away from Home, garnered recognition at Mandelbaum House, being the theme song for the residential college and was also featured at the International Convention Center for the CEMS graduation and annual events in 2017. His highly anticipated EP, Songs About You, is out on Valentine's Day 2021. Be prepared to be serenaded. Karthik, welcome That's to right. the show. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jared. So nice to hear that read out. <laughs> man, it's fantastic. I love it. It's got a, such a ring to it. Yeah. So, uh, man, you've been busy. You've been singing. You've been, mu- you've been playing. You've been composing. Probably yeah. Since an early age. So I'm really looking forward to getting into, you know, your, your story and hearing more about your journey. And uh, for all yeah. the audience out there, Karthik's going to give us a little bit of a tune later on in the show. So don't tune off. Don't tune out. Um, you're in for a little treat. Stay tuned, yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> so, Karthik, man, you were born in Singapore. That's right. And I believe you went to the army in Singapore as well. Yes. Yeah, so, as a, as a male born in Singapore, as a male citizen in Singapore, um, it's just compulsory to serve national service um, once you turn 18. Right. So, what, I was born in Singapore. I lived there from zero to nine. Yep. And then I grew up in Tasmania, non in Tasmania. Yep, of course. places, yep. my family, um, until grade 12. And then I had to go back to Singapore for two years to serve in the army over there um, before right. coming to Sydney in 2015 to study at the Sydney Court of Music. Right. Uh, so, they, so you had to piano. go back to the army? Like, that's how they yeah, I had to go back. So the, the rule is that if I didn't go back, I would never be able to travel through Singapore ever again because wow. it's an offense to not serve. Gotcha. So if I were to travel through Singapore again, I would just get arrested at the airport because wow. it's an offense and put in jail possibly. So wow. it's two years. It was a good life experience. Yeah. Um, and I don't have any regrets about it. I've learned so much from it for what I do today. Absolutely. Yeah. I can just imagine, you know, certain, you, you learn certain things or I would think that you'd learn certain things in the army that, you know, stand you in good stead for later on in life. Absolutely. Definitely. But, um, yeah. So well, when for did most you come... for my service, yeah. Yeah. And so, how old again oh, sorry. were you? So when... it's from... Sorry, Karthik. Um, I was sorry. Yes, I was 18 when I went back to Singapore. And yep. for most of my service, I was in the Singapore Armed Forces Music and Drama Company as an oh, right. artist. So I was a singer, dancer, and a host. And our job was to entertain the troops and boost the morale of the troops and entertain the whole Singapore representing the government. So, oh, um, cool. Yeah, it was cool. I just got to sing and dance every day. Awesome. <laughs> so you basically, cool. you did your basic training and then they, yeah. they said, all right, now you can just enjoy your music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the basic training was about two months. Yep. The first month was in uh, on an island uh, just yep. off Singapore. And then yep. the second month was in, in Singapore. But we had to like stay in the barracks and, you know, do all the rifle yep. firing, grenade throwing, all those army type stuff. Yeah. Wow. How cool, man. And so then tell us about your journey in music when did that start when did you know that that's what you wanted to do i'd love to hear your your backstory definitely so um it's a funny story like my first ever instrument that i learned to play was actually the trombone um, when i was in year two in singapore yeah so um i was kind of taught myself and learned from like um just my peers but the problem was with trombone it's really hard especially with your technique and your embouchure so when i came to tasmania um i had to unlearn all these bad technique which is really painful to do yeah. um so but i still play trombone all from like year two to year 12 and then i kind of stopped playing it after a while because when we came to tasmania um the initial plan was actually for my i have two sisters as well um and 
our parents wanted us to learn tap dancing first yeah, cool. so that we could all do the same thing together. But then we kind of saw how <laughs> trying, to say, <laughs> trying to say not bitchy, but like <laughs> kind of intense the dance mum scene was in Tasmania uh, or well, yeah. anywhere really. So my dad was like, Hey, why not learn the piano instead? And that's how we all started learning the piano. Wow. Um, and then I was the only one who kind of pers- persevered with it to, I pursued it to become a career um, now. Uh, my other sisters, they all, we all sing. My little sister plays the drums. Um, my big sister sings and used oh to play the God. bit of flute. So we all used to be a family band when we were, yeah, back in Tasmania. Wow. Um, but, but then the guitar, guitar I taught myself um, in Tasmania when I was like 14 years old because I always loved the guitar and I was like, oh, maybe you'll get the girls. So <laughs> <laughs> it worked. It worked, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and then with singing, with singing, I've always wanted to be a solo singer. Um, and it was actually funny. This is a funny story because in year six, my vo- my I hit puberty like really young, <laughs> and my voice started breaking really easily. So in year six, I had a um, uh, I was going to have a solo in ha- Elvis Presley's Hound Dog. Right. Yeah. Um, and in the Launceston competitions, which is a annual kind of competition music competition in our yeah. in our city. Yeah. And I was meant to have a solo part, which was meant to be like, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. Nice. But because my voice broke, I was, I, I think I sang something like, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. And like, <laughs> like the crowd was laughing. And I don't think we won. But um, since then, like that same musical director didn't give me a solo until like year 12. Uh, so you wanted to make sure to your voice was recovered. Yeah, it took me six years. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then I, in my final year, in my final year at school, I finally got a solo in, um, what was the song? Uh, lean, lean on me, Bill Withers, uh, and then since then nice. I just kept practicing heaps. Um, nice, but nice. it was yeah, it was just funny. And and so where did the music <laughs> gene come from? You both parents, one parent? Um, well, the arts gene from both parents. My my dad was in the Navy band when he was in Singapore yep. and did his service. So he played all the woodwind instruments. Yep. He played like clarinet, saxophone, flute, piccolo, wow. and he's always kind of played um, percussion instruments, yep. just auxiliary percussion. And like growing up, he always used to sing at the temples and stuff. So we always used to go and enjoy that. I, lo- I always love that. Yeah. Um, and then mum, mum's kind of acted a bit and done some public speaking in her past, um, some drama. So kind of both of them, but I think more my dad for the music side. Yeah, ah, how amazing. So Definitely. you must be really proud. You're doing really well. You got an album coming out, a new single coming out. It's all happening. Yeah. Yeah, he's actually, yeah, he's like, it was, it's actually funny because um, the Used to Crazy song, which is coming out this Friday, 18th yep. of September, I sent the, like the demo to him and it was <laughs> the first song that he really, really like actually liked. Oh, cool. <laughs> he's very, uh, very picky or very critical of my music. <laughs> oh, wow. so, but that's okay. He actually really liked it. And I was like, and he said, oh, the singing sounds great. And I was like, okay, phew, got my dad's <laughs> approval. <laughs> Thank you. And I love, I love the song he did for Mandelbaum House that's become their theme song now. It's a yeah. special song. Really yeah, that was such a uh, yeah. Um, that's so so long. That was twenty. I released it in twenty sixteen, but and made a music video out of it. Wow. And it's just like a very warm, homely song. So, um, and that's where we met as well, Darren. And yeah, exactly, so. that's where we met. Yeah. I did a. I photographed a trivia night for the Mandelbaum House, and Karthik was there. He wasn't singing or dancing, but yeah. he was. I, but his personality was so um, expressive and so warm, and I just kind of clicked straight away. Yeah, we did. Oh, thanks okay. so much. Yeah, story. Oh, and I've just yeah. kind of delved into different things and songwriting and musical directing since then. Yeah. Awesome. So um, tell us a bit about, you know, your, your time here as a, a student of music. You went to the conservatorium. Um, what's that like? Yes. Is that pretty grueling? Um, in a way, yes. So I, I went to the Sydney Con from 2015 to 2018 to actually study classical piano performance, which wow. not a lot of people know because they always see me posting videos of me singing. Yep. Um, so even sometimes I'm confused where I went, what I went to the con for. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, it was a lovely time. I The beautiful part about the Sydney Con is that I met so many musicians and amazing yeah. people that I'm still friends with today and I still play music with today. So I think it was more about building a, a network rather than degree and a piece of paper sure but sure. i mean that's with, yeah and then, you know our degree doesn't guarantee us a job as well so i think it was more about making the contacts and friends and kind of networking and just kind of helping each other out i think is the best yeah. way to think about it to get gigs and to get work and make a living off music absolutely and yeah. is it true that i mean at one stage i remember that at the con you had to play at least two or more instruments is that is that true or how does that work? um i can't i think this was a requirement back when i was not anymore, but 
I mean, not a requirement, but it was it was really appreciated. But it, it in saying that, most people at the con at, play at least two instruments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a voice and the yeah, instrument. Yeah, it's yeah. like there's only I think only a handful of people that I know that only play one instrument and their instrument. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think when you go into music and you let, start learning instruments, you you want to learn about other instruments and you want to become versatile. So. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And, and if you had yeah. to choose your favorite instrument apart from your voice, what would it be? Oh, piano. Yeah. Oh, I reckon piano is just beautiful. I mean, yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, do, do you mean apart from piano and guitar as well? Uh, oh, no. Between, like, uh, piano and guitar is always a tough choice. You know, to yeah. choose between piano. They're such great, they're so versatile and they're such great instruments, both of them. It's really tough to choose between them. Yeah. As with the guitar, like it's, it's, I feel like it's great for more percussive songs yeah. and it's just, it's so easy to carry around just to yeah. get a guitar. But yeah. I mean, my dream is to have a grand piano, like a Fazioli or a Steinway piano in my house. Wow. Um, that costs about, could be up to a million dollars. So um, if anyone's watching and wants to sponsor me, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> I'm more than happy to take your donations. <laughs> so um, yeah. just, I just want to delve into your time at the con a little bit more. I mean, when you were there, did you um, have to do hours and hours of practice and performance or was it a lot of theory or like, how does it all work? Yeah, so the first, the first two years, um, we were kind of glad to get that done because we had to do a lot of the history subjects, yeah, yeah. which I mean, some people did enjoy, but I didn't enjoy because <laughs> um, we wanted to just do more practical things yeah. and perform. So um, the first, first two years were pretty chill from the performing side, but once year three and four came around, we yeah. were, it's kind of standard to practice about three to four hours a day, maybe more, yeah. but at least three or at least two. Yeah, yeah. to kind of be at the standard that they're expecting you to be at to right. get a good mark and to yeah i guess be a professional performer it does take a lot of work and especially with classical piano because it's like with classical music it's such a perfectionist art that yeah. it's just it just takes so much practice and it's so stressful um but it's i don't know there's some beautiful music out there and i always chose to play the music that no one else is playing because everyone plays like beethoven chopin yep. And bark everything so i my teacher was really supportive of that as well um dr paul oh, ricard cool. ford so i was and he was very supportive of my music career well my singing career outside of it as well nice. um so much so that he has like the ep poster of my wanderlust 2015 he has that poster like on his wall on his room i think oh, he still has it so that's really sweet fantastic. yeah proud very proud yeah so and i think I was, just, I was just lucky to have yeah really supportive peers and teachers around me at the con, yeah. It's, it's incredible. And so you're, you're extremely versatile. I mean, you're a classical pianist, but you also do yeah. rock and pop and everything, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just feel like I've, I just have a love for so many different genres. Yep. With, with piano, yes, I was trained classically, but I can play a bit of jazz, a bit of pop, a bit of R&B, stuff like that. Yep. With singing as well, like, I mean, I've never actually had vocal lessons. I've been classically trained with voice, but I've just transferred <laughs> the knowledge from what I've learned through music yeah. in all my years and learned from singing choirs, vocal ensembles from other amazing singers. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of learned off people and, oh, wow. and a lot of singers like that also, yeah, do that. Just learn off people and imitate and then yeah, find your own I mean, sound. Like, you know, everything creative, we're all learning from each other and we're all, you know, taking what we hear and we're making it our own in a certain way. So I mean, exactly. that's how the creative process works. Really, you know, We're all being influenced by each other and influencing each other. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's the beauty of music and like the social life as well in music Absolutely. and the arts. So. How cool, man. How yeah. cool. And so you, when did you, you know, release your first single and, you know, tell me a bit about your band and how you put that together. I'd love to know about that. Yeah. So with the, with the band, um, I actually like released a Wonderlust EP in 2015. Yep. Um, but I've just kind of removed it off Spotify and everything just because I wasn't happy with the sound quality compared to what is coming out this Friday and what's oh, going to come out. So, um, but I'll be probably re-releasing that EP as a live EP. So nice. stay tuned. Don't want to say too much yet. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> cool. um, and but getting the band together, it's just the most fun thing. Um, now, after five years in Sydney, you've kind of met so many different people and I guess you kind of just have your favorites. So picking the band, um, there's so many talented people in Sydney, so many talented oh, yeah. musicians. It's just, I mean, especially compared to Tasmania where I grew up. Yeah. So I think it really comes down to, and I think a lot of musicians will agree with me, who you can like vibe with and yeah. who you actually like as a person and like hang out with yeah. rather than just being a good musician because that doesn't really count too much. It's like, yeah. yeah. Definitely. And I suppose if you like to do live 
shows, you know, you mm-hmm. need that energy and that connection between, you know, the, the, yeah. the counterparts. You need to bounce off each other. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, the audience, I mean, yeah, humans are pretty smart people. Like, they're not dumb. They can tell. Yeah, yeah. So you just want it to be genuine and you just want it to, yeah, just be fun. That's what music is all about. Yeah, and I prefer cool. playing music with other people rather than yeah. doing, like, solo gigs. It's just yeah. that, yeah. All right. So, so yeah, good. so let's talk about that. So, so, I mean, obviously on the side or not on the side, but, you know, as part of what you do, you also, uh, you know, you write music, mm-hmm. you release albums, but you also do some live gigs and, you know, some other appearances. So tell us a bit about what you're doing. Yeah. So my main kind of job is um, singing for weddings all over New South Wales, right. sometimes different parts of Australia and sometimes even Singapore for like oh. some family and friends right. um, every weekend. So, I mean, before, before COVID, <laughs> yeah. Um, we used to be singing about two to three weddings every weekend. Um, sometimes even, but then June and July is the quietest time for me. So maybe that's one or two weddings a weekend. Right. Yeah. Um, or maybe in July is like the quietest, maybe like just two weddings in the whole month. But I've been lucky enough to get work and for clients to want me to, to have me there. Um, that's incredible. Yeah. So that's been great. And like I do everything up from solo, duo, three piece bands to yeah. 10 piece bands. Um, it just really depends on the clients and the budget. But yeah, when I'm not doing weddings, I think um, this year especially it's been hard. So I've been lucky enough that some agents have got me some pub gigs and some bar gigs oh, great. Um, and some market stuff. So that's that's been kind of keeping us or well, me alive. Yeah. And I've been lucky yeah. to get those gigs. So very grateful. Yeah. That's awesome. And I mean, and so what did you do now? How has COVID affected you? I mean, it obviously been tricky with some of those that work. Yeah. So like with COVID, um, because I also manage a music agency, wedding music oh, agency, right. nice. Red Soda. Um, it's like we're all kind of based on commissions so it's not like with salary. So a lot of people have been postponing their weddings to next year. So yeah. it's like we're kind of doing a lot of work for free, but then we only get paid yeah. next year. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's hard, but luckily the government has offered JobKeeper and that's, that's awesome. really saved a lot of musicians, I feel. Um, and like my landlord's been great to offer rent reductions. Nice. Um, and yeah, there's actually been a lot of help, thankfully. Um, but I think I just, I feel sad for people who are not, citizens and permanent residents of Australia. Like we have so many, so much foreign talent that are not getting taken care of. So I think the government needs to do something about that because we need them to keep the economy growing as well here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and yeah. And contributing to the music society. Yeah. And then, and slowly, I suppose, as you mentioned before, now restrictions are being lifted a little bit, starting to book some smaller gigs and that's starting to mm-hmm. come back now, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. So like my, like my October is luckily looking okay. So yeah. October, October, November and March and April are the biggest wedding seasons in well, New South Wales, at least, right, um, yeah. because we just usually have really good weather in Sydney and New South Wales, which is yeah. another great factor Yeah. because oh, you can make wow. a living out of weddings here. Yeah. yeah. And so do you miss, uh, do you miss Singapore? You miss your time in Singapore? Um, I do. I, yeah. <laughs> it depends. I miss, yeah, now that I think about it, I've had so much time to think this year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I do miss like hanging out with like my guys. We had a boy band in Singapore. Like, oh, really? Cool. The, <laughs> during the, the army, yeah, that I directed. I love it. Um, and we have, I mean, I have family and friends in Singapore as well. So I do miss the food, especially a lot. Oh, yeah, like that's what yeah. every Singaporean says. Like we just miss the food. Oh, um, can, I love it. Yeah, yeah. There's some pretty good food here in Sydney, like Singaporean food, Malaysian yeah. food in Sydney. Yeah. So it's not too bad, but then... You know, you never get the authentic, authentic thing unless you go to Singapore. And that's the beauty of traveling as well. So absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I can't wait to travel again. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I think all of us are waiting to travel. Yeah. We wait yeah. Till it's, you know, it's safe enough and we can go and enjoy ourselves and, you know, just release, release ourselves from this crazy time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, was meant, I was meant to go to, July, uh, to India in July this year to visit like one of my really good friends. Oh, wow. Well. But I couldn't. And like a lot of, yeah, I was actually meant to be in Singapore this year a lot for a lot of friends and families' weddings, but that's yeah. been postponed. But that's and, okay. And any place in the world that you want to see, particularly for the music? For the music? Well, I, would, <laughs> I was going to say the States, yeah. but then <laughs> it's a bit of a crazy place to be at right now, which is yeah. kind of been, I think this year it's, it's kind of, um, what do you call it? kind of made my opinion like really clear of where I want to live in the future. And I kind of want to be based in Sydney. Yeah. Um, like just visit different countries, but not live there. Just, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Just like the leadership. There's, there's so many things that I don't know. It's not right. And Australia, we're actually like Australians don't realize how lucky they are to like live and grow up and be born in Australia. It's like, we're really lucky. Yeah, so. 100%. I totally agree. Yeah. Like I've traveled a lot as well. And every time I come home, I say, wow, mm-hmm. this is the best place to live. You know, it's great yeah. to travel, but, to live, you cannot beat Australia. 
Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The tax is a bit higher, but you know, if that could come down, that'd be great. But everything, but everything else is great. You yeah. know? Singapore tax is very low. It is. It is. Singapore tax but is then, like what, 15% or 12% or something? Like yeah. That. 12 to 15, depending on how much you earn, I think. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it and yeah, but Singapore is also becoming so expensive and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so it just it depends. Is. It depends what you really like value. And I think everyone's got different values and what they want as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think Australia yeah. to like, yeah, lifestyle and to raise a family and stuff like that. It's just perfect. Definitely. hundred yeah. percent. Um, and so all your family's now out here or you still have some family back at home? Um, so my immediate family is all in Australia. So my, my parents and my big sister live in Tassie. I grew up still. Nice. And my little sister lives in Melbourne and I'm here in Sydney by myself. Yeah. Oh, wow. So we're all of Australia. Um, but yeah, it's been hard because I usually go back to Tassie pretty often to visit my family, yeah. but I haven't seen them since like February, which is a long time. Yeah, and so Tassie's yeah. borders, I think, are only opening after December 1st, if right. they are going to open. So yeah, 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 we'll yeah. see. We'll see. Yeah, well, let's, in terms of your music, um, mm. what inspires you? How do you, you know, how do you come up with material when you write? That's what I've always loved to, to hear and love to know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing because I was just going to say breakups. Um, <laughs> it's always love, isn't it? It's always love. It's what always, it's always, um, I mean, my whole EP that's coming out in Fe on Valentine's Day next year is all, it's called Songs About You because the you is about, you know, different experiences, different girls that I've dated or had experiences with. And it's just all about love and heartbreak. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. why it's coming out Valentine's Day. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's really funny for me and I don't know if it's the same for a lot of singers, but it's easier to write when you're sad yeah. and yeah. when you about a, a, a sad situation or a crazy experience rather than when you're happy. Yeah. So it's just easier. It's not impossible, but it's just easier. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> I mean, it'd be fascinating to explore the, the psyche involved in that. Like, I mean, obviously when you're, yeah. you know, you're sad, you're more, um, res, you know, reflective and you're more soulful sometimes. And yeah. maybe you go, you go a bit deeper. So that's where you can, but why shouldn't you actually be able to come up with something amazing when you're happy and elated? That's bizarre. Really nice. Yeah, you, you can as well. I think it's just, most humans in the world like we're all always striving for happiness so i feel yeah. that um being sad is like it's more common and it's easier to relate to for a lot yeah. of people yeah, yeah so that's why people love a lot of like sad songs and ballads and yeah you know like for example <laughs> shallow that came out and just, I don't know, yeah. just yeah, so exactly. many songs um yeah. exactly. and i think but, even we mentioned when we spoke um to prepare for this episode i said to you i said yeah isn't that fascinating that in the whole history of music just about every single song on every single album is about love. I was like, yeah. oh my God, there's nobody writes about anything else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, I'm not an expert on love at all. I'm only 25, <laughs> but I can only, I guess, but that's, I think it's, that's also the beauty of songwriters and artists because we write about our own experiences and we yeah. just hope that other people can relate to it because we kind of know that we're not the only ones going through it. And yeah, it's sure. like, yeah, I think a lot, of, a lot of the times we think that we're the only one that's going through a toxic or like a crazy situation, but there's also, that's actually so many more people going yeah. through the same thing. So wow. that's what music, like it brings people together and it just makes you, you know, feel sad or feel happy. And that's yeah. the beauty of it. So that's that. probably right. Yeah. That. Well, man, like I think the audience is dying to hear you sing. So before yeah. we get you to sing, maybe mm -hmm. can you just tell us a bit about the inspiration behind the album and then the, the actual single and then play us a little, you know, part of your single and, uh, you know, we'd all love to hear it. Um, yeah, so I've just been wanting to put out music for a very long time yep. and the, the EP that's coming out on Valentine's Day, it's songs that I've not written just this year. I've, the, the oldest song is I think I wrote when I was 27, in 2017. Nice. Um, it's called Fallen For You, which is the second single coming out in November. Nice. So it's just a culmination of, and I wanted the EP to represent a body of work and it kind of all flows together. So all the songs are about either love or heartbreak or yeah. um, like this single that's coming out this Friday is called Used to Crazy and um, yeah. <laughs> I'm about that song. It's a, it's a really fun boppy song um, and the song is literally about all the crazy girls I used to date. Um, and, but also it's also a deeper, yeah, a deeper meaning of the song is actually because when people were so used to crazy experiences and crazy people and toxic people, when we finally come into a new and healthy relationship, um, it's like, we feel like we're always on edge because we're so used to drama. We think that we should be fighting, but then we shouldn't actually, we should just appreciate what we have and yeah, exactly. just get used to the normal. But because we're so used to crazy, you don't know what it should be, which is a line of the song. Um, nice. Nice. So yeah. And it, but so because to kind of disguise that serious part of the song 
It just made it into like a fun Bobby song. That's right. And you, so, you have, um, um, do you have a record label or how, how is your work being distributed and produced? I know I'm an independent artist, so artist. yeah. Um, if anyone wants to sign me, hit me up. <laughs> yeah, nice. um, but yeah, so doing all the marketing, all the recording, everything just like out of my expenses and myself, but wow. it's fine. I'm like, I'm so happy. I think this is the first time I've like been really, really happy in my career and finally doing my own music. And so COVID has actually been a blessing in a sense because I've finally had time to do all of that. Yeah, sure. Um, and, so, and does that mean, do you yeah, do your own great. sound engineering as well? You do your own mixing and, and production? Or you get someone, you outsource um, no so yeah so i have my producer glenn lamanta um he was actually really well known as well um he is an, like we're really good friends we work together he's an amazing singer guitarist pianist songwriter yeah. um producer just he does amazing things so i've really been really happy to work with him he's been recording and mixing and producing all my all my tracks so okay. he does all that for me um and like this oh yeah so this song was actually um a small co-write with justino takshi which who i write with a lot nice. um and we've got some songs coming up soon as well and there's been yeah a whole team like sheena wilbo on backing vocals jack Perdon on trumpet k aroko on tr a saxophone um so yeah it's just been so much, like we've, i've had a really lovely team behind me for this so i do it all by myself which is the biggest lesson yeah. i've learned from the first ep as well Fantastic. Um, so yeah well, uh, i'm really yeah, excited wait. for everyone to hear it when you're ready go for it Sure, we'll do. <laughs> I'll just give you guys the first, the first half of it, and then you got to listen for more. <laughs> um, here we go. This is used to crazy. Oh, oh, oh. You never told me what we were. Why don't I ever learn? So I guess you got there first At least you left my favorite t-shirt Yeah, cause you're so emotional Got me confused I just ain't material Baby, you're just my muse I don't even really wanna be with you I'm just here to prove That you're out of your mind I'm so used to crazy I don't know what it should be like It feels so calm but then feels wrong Is this even real? So you Cause I have someone that loves me and calls me baby fantastic Man, thank I you so it. much yeah this is super smooth super funky and your guitar work is great oh uh, thank you man that is hot oh, that's how the song was actually started like with just guitar in my voice that is cool um, i love it so, well, yeah that is great so everybody out there i'm glad you like it yeah friday to download and, and purchase and hear the rest of the song um and where where will people be able to get the exactly. album spotify Definitely. apple music everything Everywhere. So um, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Deezer, Tidal, Pandora, Google Music, YouTube Music. It'll be everywhere. Yeah, so you can't miss it. Wow, that's so really good. Stream that, it, buy really it, good, man. play it, blast it from your speakers. Yeah. That is Thank really you so much, good. Man. You yeah. are great, man. That is fantastic. <laughs> well done. Well done. Thank you. And how yeah, long was I can't wait for everyone to hear the full band version. It's, that's, it's like really funky. Yeah. How long did that take you to write? Was it quick or was it a longer process to write that? Um, so uh, this is the thing I actually started writing this back in 2018 I saw actually and it's just wrote the first half of it yeah. um, but then I just didn't have time to finish it um, and but then this year I finally had time to sit down and be like okay I'm gonna finish these songs so I finished it this year um, ah, so yeah and it yeah. was kind of nice to have a fresh fresh kind of look on it and yeah get into it yeah. so I mean, imagine yeah. some songs it's one of my favorite songs I reckon really oh that's it's really good I love it I mean, I'm, I'm gonna check that out I mean, at, uh, you know, some songs probably would come to you really Please quickly. Do, yeah. and some songs take a bit of time to craft. Yeah. And you just never know what's going to happen then. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. But I try, I try to write my songs like within a day because it's just, because wow. I don't know, just makes zone. your ideas like flow yeah. better. 
Yeah, you're in the zone. Um, but yeah, sometimes if it takes too long, it just kind of dies off, I feel. But yeah, but yeah I'm so glad I finished the song and finally releasing it, recorded it. So oh, more songs to come too. Sensational, man. Well, next time we're going to have to have you here with the grand piano and you have to play us a tune on the grand piano. We'll try and find a camera that's big enough to capture it. Please do, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Definitely. Do. And if anyone wants to sponsor us with a Fazioli or a Steinway, we're more than happy <laughs> to be sponsored. <laughs> and by the way, what kind of guitar? Just got to plug that. <laughs> what kind of guitar do you like? What kind of guitar are you playing? Um, so this is a Yamaha NTX Hello? 900FM. Nice, nice. Um, it's, a, it's actually an acoustic guitar, but then it's got nylon strings because ah, I just like great. the sound better. And it's yep. easier on my fingers because I play yep. so much piano as well. Gotcha. Um, and I got it when in 2013. 2012 or 2013 so i've nice. had it for a long time and it's been my baby so yeah nice guitar yeah, it's guitars make great guitars well, yeah uh, i see guitars in the back of your yeah i got a couple shirt. of guitars like i'm my dad taught me how to play when i was very young so i muck around a little bit on uh, acoustic electric but man i'm staying in my lane i've got nothing on you <laughs> <laughs> i let you hey, take the music is good. Yeah, but, uh, everyone, I, you know, so. love music and um you know music for me is one of the most um, incredible creations that you can impart into the world. Like for me, music is, is something amazing Definitely. because you know you can hear a song or a couple of lines or a couple of bars, and it can transform your mood like that. You know, to me, that's just one of the most exactly. amazing things. Not a lot of art can do that, but music just can take you from one place to another really quickly, and that's just yeah. the magic of music. Yeah, yeah. and that, yeah, that's why like songwriters, we write and we put out music and. Yeah. Even if it's if we're, if we're losing money, we just need to put out the music for ourselves, which is the most yeah, important thing for us. So. That's actually a really good question. I was about to ask you about that. I mean, how do you, you know, I suppose there's a lot of artists that can maybe try and copy a little bit and try and, um, you know, do do certain things because other people's doing other people are doing them, or it's the trend to sing in a certain way. Like a lot of people at some point started singing in a different way, like singing a bit like I can't remember mm -hmm. the name of the person, but. You know, so they started pulling their voice back in a bit. So how do you retain yeah, that authenticity right. and just be who you want to be and not get influenced by the rest of the, what's happening? Yeah, I think, I think one of the hardest things to do is to just stay true to yourself and stay true to your music. Um, the, the money factor, the money is always going to come and go in my mind. Um, and I think, yeah, because people put out music more for our souls than I guess for commercial reasons. I mean, like you can do it commercially as well, but I think for me, it's just, I need to put out music because it just makes me happy and I want people to hear the music and I want people to relate. And if it does well, that's amazing. But um, I think I've also changed my mindset from being like, oh, I just want to write hits all the time yeah. um, to being look, I'm just going to write the best I can do and I want to put it out. And if people love it, that is great. And if I can make a living off it, that'd be even better. So well, man, that, yeah, the, I think the, the product anything? and the quality has to be better. Definitely. If I've heard anything, I think, you know, that song that you just played us, Used to Crazy, that's, that's got hit written all over it, man. I love it. I think it's great. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we'll uh, see how we go. Yeah. Okay, fingers yeah, crossed, man. Everyone share it and it'll Absolutely. help a lot. So, um, so yeah, so tell us thank just you. Thanks uh, so much, at the man. end, yeah. tell us again, uh, you know, how to get your music, where to find you. Give us a bit more of a, a plug as to how to find uh, Carthage mm -hmm. music. Sure. So the best way to find me is on my Instagram I'm most active on Instagram um, and Facebook as well but it's just Instagram mm -hmm. I'll just post stories of what I'm up to and just all the links are there um, on Spotify it's Karthik Kuna so Instagram Instagram it's also at Karthik Kuna K-A-R-T-I-K-K-U-N-A so put that in give me a follow um, and I promise to put out good content and funny content <laughs> sensational man love it love it well, uh, Karthik it's been a pleasure having you on the show thank you so much been my first musician um, so it's been amazing right. to have some music on the show as well. And, you know, from yeah, such, a, from such a talented guy. Um, so I really appreciate it. And, you know, everybody out there, check out Karthik's uh, new uh, song that's coming out, Used to Crazy, on Friday. And check out his EP that's coming out on Valentine's Day 2021, Songs About You. And because uh, it's sensational. And I think, you know, you're going to uh, really enjoy it. Thank you so much, everyone. Well done, so much for and my pleasure. Anything that you want to leave us with before you? Oh, um, just keep supporting live music and artists, everyone, because we need it, especially the most during this crazy time. So buy tickets to shows, um, stream people's music, and just tell the artists that you love, that you actually love their music. That really feels good, and that really helps us keep going. So, well, yeah. 
to share the love, really. Well done. I love it. Share the love. Well, Karthik, man, it's been an absolute pleasure. I wish you all the very best. I hope your single and your album just kill it on the charts. And I hope everybody out there goes and checks it out. And uh, Used to Crazy and Songs About You by Karthik Kuna. So uh, we'll see you very, very soon. Everybody out there, thanks again for a great episode. We'll see you tomorrow for episode 105. And stay tuned for more. Thanks again, everybody. Bye for now.